welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is November 20th, 1954, and the title is How to Kill a Woman. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> It's a doggone shame, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what is, Chester? Well, for long, it'll be too cold to set out here of an evening. <laughs> Winter's too cold, summer's too hot, huh? How do you like spring? Oh, spring's all right, up here. But I remember back in Waco, we all got the ague every spring. Oh, a terrible fever. Makes a man feel like a harp with a thousand strings. <laughs> yeah, I know, I've had it. You know, my ma had an idea we wouldn't get it if we had three hard-boiled eggs on Good Friday. But if that didn't work and we got the AU anyway, then she'd tie salt mackerel onto our feet. Well, that should have toughened up your feet anyway. We all survive. That stage is mighty late tonight, Mr. Dillon. Are you expecting somebody? Me? Well, now, who'd I be expecting? Oh, maybe some girl from Waco who's found out where you've been hiding. <laughs> uh, not very likely. Even my ma don't know where I'm at anymore. Hey, here comes the stage driver. It's Jim Buck. Yeah. Marshal. Hello, Chester. Oh, Jim. What's the matter, trouble, Jim? I'd call it trouble, Marshal. Got held up. One passenger shot down in cold blood. Huh? Meanest thing I ever saw. Well, what did happen? On the side of Wagon Bed Springs. Between there and Jesse Daggett's. Daggett's? He runs a stage station out toward the Colorado line. Yeah. I got a mighty strong feeling Jesse Daggett's in on this, Marshal. Well, what makes you think so, Jim? He knew I was carrying gold. It wasn't much, but it was some. After we'd laid over an hour or so at the station, I seen Daggett talking to a man who just rode in. As cussed looking a gunman as you'd want. Well, then what happened? Then the fellow rode off. He was alone? Just him. His face covered. And he never said a word. Took the strong box, robbed the passengers... And he got on his horse, turned around, and shot one of them right through the head. Forevermore. Then he rode off. I could have cried. I was so mad. Helpless. That's a strange thing, Jim, is shooting down the passenger. Why would a man do that, Marshal? I don't understand it. Well, he just likes to kill, maybe. I'll go back with you tomorrow, Jim. Maybe we can find out. <laughs> We made the trip down the Santa Fe Trail next day through Wagon Bed Springs and on to Jesse Daggett Stage Station. I sat on the box with Jim Buck while Chester rode inside with the passengers. And by evening, everybody was glad when we reached Daggett's. It was a typical road ranch with a large eating room and a row of sleeping quarters for the travelers. Jesse Daggett himself was a tall, angular man. Gaunt and gray. He was quiet, 
but one could feel the trouble that lay inside him. The first chance I had to talk to him was in the yard after supper. Cold weather be coming soon. Have to lay in more whiskey. I figured you probably made your own whiskey, Daggett. I do. A five barrel of corn buried under the road out there. Stage and the horses keep them shook up proper that way. Oh. You, uh, had the station long? Three years come spring, Marshal. Put her up myself. Pawnees try to burn her down now and then, but I'm still here. You plan to stay here? Man's plans are his own, Marshal. I'm sorry. It was just an idle question. Uh, that's all right. I uh, think I'd like it here myself. No neighbors, but lots of company passing through. Ain't all good company. Well, lots of people travel, good and bad. That's true. Like uh, the man who held up Jim Buck's stage yesterday. Uh, shot that passenger. What about him? Well, you might call him company like we were talking about. The bad kind. Any man kills in cold blood that way, I'd call bad. Might have been a mistake, though. The gun might have gone off by accident. <laughs> might. You don't think it did, huh? What I think won't raise the dead, Marshal. No, but it uh, might keep more people from dying, though. Figure that's what you're doing here. Looking for that fellow. Jim Buck thinks it might have been that gunman you were talking to here the day of the holdup. That was Nat Pilcher. And I don't care what Jim Buck thinks. Well, it won't help your business or the stage companies if more passengers get killed near here, Daggett. No, it won't, for a fact. Everybody expects a stage to get held up once in a while, but uh, it's a different matter to shoot people down for nothing. You know, I don't figure this man, unless... Uh, He's just a born killer. Well, he could have a lot of reasons. Men are all different. Sure. sure. All got different reasons for doing what they do. Living the way they live. I guess it's what happened to them in the past that spells it out. Well, that's why I'm a lawman and you run a stage station and whoever he is holds up people and kills them. Marshal, I'll tell you something, but it ain't what you want to hear. I believe in letting every man kill his own snakes. Ah. Then uh, this business is between whoever that bandit is and me. Is that it? That's it exactly. Every man for himself, you might say. I don't interfere, and I won't help. Mm -hmm. I see. It's got to be like that. Even though a man was killed for nothing? The dog eat dog, I see. Well, I hope you won't regret it, Daggett. <laughs> One more regret won't break me, Marshal. I'm not so sure, Daggett. I'm not so sure it won't. This is it. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy. You enjoy all the taste. L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's miracle tip. L&M's got everything. It's America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it. L&M filters. This is it. Light and mild. It's the best. L&M filters. Highest quality filter tip. This is it. L&M filters. L&M filters with the miracle tip. King size or regular, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Trying to get anything out of Jesse Daggett was hopeless. 
But I still couldn't agree with Jim Buck that Daggett was partners with a road agent. Daggett somehow wasn't that kind of a man. Anyway, there was nothing to do but wait and let things happen. Two days passed while Chester and I sat in the eating room and played two-handed stud and got bored and restless. Late afternoon of the second day, however, Jim Buck drove back with his stage. The travelers came in first, went to their rooms, and then Jim came over to say hello. I wish I had a job like yours. Nothing to do but sit around and play cards and drink whiskey. Well, we do a lot of thinking, Jim. That's what makes up for it. You do, huh? Oh. Have you done any about finding Jesse Daggett's friend? Nat Pilcher? Not if we did find him, Jim. We couldn't prove anything. No. Neither could I, I guess. You might just shoot him for luck. Yeah, you're too suspicious, Jim. It was probably just some cowboy riding through. Maybe. Anyway, I got no gold this trip. And well, there's nothing to worry about, is there? There's another pilgrim for supper. That's the first visitor we've had since you left, Jim. Man has to be mighty hungry to ride in here for Jesse Daggett's food. Where is Daggett, anyway? Well, he went outside just after you pulled in. Didn't you see him? I was busy with the horses, and I still got work to do. I'll see you at supper. Oh, my. That's a hard life driving a stage, Mr. Dillon. I don't think I'd want to do that. Uh, you might give it a try first, Justin. Mm. Now, wait a minute. I heard there was a marshal here. No, yeah, that's right. What can I do for you? Me? You can't do nothing for me, Marshal. And what do you want? Oh, I just wanted to see what a Marshal looks like. A live one. You satisfied? Sure. All right, then get out of here. You're touchy, Marshal, real touchy. I don't aim to start no trouble. Only come in to say hello, friendly like. What's your name? Pilcher. Nat Pilcher. Yeah, I thought so. Sure. I'm a friend of Jesse Daggett's, an old friend. Where do you live, Pilcher? You got a job around here? I'm a cowboy, Marshal. Know anybody needs a good hand? Now, what do you do besides ride? Funny you ask that. Is it? You being a lawman, it is. Ever hear of Charlie Hall, sheriff over in New Mexico? I have. They say Clay Allison shot him. That's what they say, Marshal. But I know for a fact it wasn't Clay. Nice meeting you, Marshal. See you later. Jesse Daggett's stage station lay on the prairie, miles from anywhere. It would be an easy thing for a man like Nat Pilcher to ride in long enough to check on a stagecoach and the value of its cargo, and then ride up the road a few miles and wait for it. But I still didn't believe Daggett was in on the deal, even though he and Pilcher had obviously known each other somewhere before. The next morning at dawn, Jim Buck loaded his passengers aboard and pulled out. Daggett and I stood there and watched the little cloud of dust as it moved up the Santa Fe Trail toward Wagon Bed Springs. You'll make Dodge tonight. He'll be back here tomorrow. Yeah, if he doesn't get shot up. I'm carrying no gold this trip. I, uh, met your friend Nat Pilcher last night, Daggett. Pilcher rolled out before supper. Yeah, I know. Seems like he only came in to tell me what a hard case he is. <laughs> to warn me about it. Didn't have much effect. You're still here. <laughs> you don't think I scare that easy. You're all right, Marshal. You should have gone back to Dodge. Why, Daggett? Why should I? Things will work out here without you. Now, go ahead. I so. Now, Daggett, I don't know what's going on down here. And if I'm meddling in your affairs, I'm sorry. But a stage has been robbed and a man's been killed. And that makes it my affair, too. I want to thank you for not thinking I got anything to do with all that, Marshal. Well, I wasn't sure at first, but I am now. 
Even so, I'm not going back to Dodge without a man. No, I suppose you won't. Now, let's go inside. Sure. You know, you ought to plant some trees out here, Daggett. Sure improve the place. Not enough water. Now, dig for it, then. You'll never get a woman to come out here and marry you unless you've at least got some trees. How's that? No offense. I was just remarking that women like things growing around a place. Let's say that I meant it generally. I thought to have a woman here once. When I first planned about running the stage station. That was over in New Mexico. Seems like a long time ago. Now things don't always work out. I was mighty fond of her. But I lost her. I've been a little lonely ever since. Well, you came close. That's better than some men do. Oh, I don't know about that. Funny how a man goes right on living, even when his luck is about to run out. Yeah. Well, come on inside. Heat up some coffee. Good. Got him, Chester. Hey, Mr. Dillon, do huh? you mind if we don't play no more? I swear I'm beginning to see things. <laughs> it's okay with me. Uh, the stage ought to be here pretty soon anyway. Uh, just think. Jim Buck's taking the stage all the way to Dodge and back, and we just been sitting here another two days. Well, waiting's always the hardest part, Chester. <laughs> I just hope it pays off. Hey, there's the stage now. At least there'll be some people around here. Yeah, let's go out and meet it, huh? Howdy, Jim. Come out here, Marshal. Now, what's the matter? More trouble, Jim? He stopped me again, Marshal. My heaven, I'm going after him now if you don't. Take a look in the coach there. Huh? Why? Why, it's woman. She dead, Jim? Of course she's dead. She's got a bullet in her. Where are your other passengers, Jim? They ain't any. She was the only one this trip. Look at him, Marshal. He killed her. There's some blood soaking through your jacket, Jim. You hit bad? In the shoulder. I wasn't going to stop at all. It knocked me off the box. And he just rode up and put a bullet in her and rode off. Never said a word. You think it was Pilcher? Who else would it be? You've seen him. You know what he's like. Must be him. Let's ask Jesse Daggett here who it was. Take a look in the coach, Daggett. Take a good look. Well, Daggett, what do you think of killing women? Oh... Look at him, Marshal. I told you. You ever see a guilty-looking man? No, you're wrong, Jim. It doesn't even make sense. He didn't do it, no. But he's in on it somehow. Jester. Yes, sir? I'll uh, help you take the woman inside. Then we'll see what we can do about your shoulder, Jim. Filter tip smokers, this is it. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Yes, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy. Lets you enjoy all the taste. L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. L&M stands out for highest quality tobaccos, low nicotine tobaccos, L&M tobaccos, light and mild. L&M's got everything. K-2 
king size or regular, it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Yes, L and M stands out from all the rest. It didn't make sense, none at all. But I figured it would soon. And after I did what I could for Jim Buck's shoulder, Chester and I buried the woman. Put a cross over her grave. We'd find out later who she was. The rest of the night, we took turns watching for a move from Jesse Daggett. As sure enough, about an hour before dawn, he saddled up and rode out into the prairie. We let him get a little start and then took a couple of his horses and followed him. You think he's going to meet Pilcher? If he can find him. He must have come ten miles already. Yeah, about that. We shouldn't have let him get so far ahead of us, though. We're right on his trail. Yeah, I know. What's that up there? Huh? Look. It's a man. Yeah, come on. Why, it's Daggett, Mr. Dillon. He's been shot. Yeah. You followed me, Marshal? I better you hurt, Daggett. Pretty bad. Don't you? I'd have killed him, Marshal, but my gun didn't go off. And he got me easy then. No luck left at all. Right? Any idea where Pilcher is now, Daggett? He said he was going back to the station to get you. Took my horse with him. I'd have come with you this morning, Daggett. Wasn't your business. Between me and Pilcher. He come here looking for a fight. I didn't want to kill nobody no more. Not even him. So he drove me to it. Finally, finally that woman, he knew I couldn't stand that. You mean he shot her and that other passenger just to prod you into a fight? Marshal, I'll tell you now. I had a woman out in New Mexico. I caught her running off with Nat Bilcher. I didn't shoot him, though. I shot her instead. Figured that made more sense. You killed her? I don't think he'd have minded so much if I'd have killed him. I figured he wasn't doing nothing I didn't want to do myself. I didn't blame him. None of blamed her. Pilcher been after me ever since. I could have stopped all this if you'd have told me sooner, Daggett. Every man's got to kill his own snakes, Marshal. I tried. You can have them now. I ain't gonna live long. I'm sorry, Daggett. Chester will stay with you. I'm going back to the station. You both go. I can die alone. I ain't afraid. No. Goodbye, Daggett. Bye, Marshal. Chester. Yes, sir. Uh, do what you can for him. Huh? Mm, poor fellow. I'll send somebody out to help you bring him in later. Yes, sir. Time you got back, Marshal. Where's Pilcher, Jim? Out back, looking for whiskey. Where's everybody else? It's been a busy morning. How's your shoulder? It hurts. I got to get up to Dodge somehow. It's... Good morning, Marshal. Hello, Pilcher. Hmm. You've been riding. 
So have you. A man like me rides a lot, Marshal. You should have kept going, Pilcher. I wanted to see you again before I left. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Jesse Daggett told me. I'm going to kill you and then Jim here. Now, wait a minute. Shut up, Jim. Pilcher, you can drop your gun belt and take your chances in court if you like. My chances are better right here, Marshal. Now, that's your choice. It's always been my choice. Except for the night Jesse Daggett shot his wife. Did he tell you about that? It doesn't matter now. To me, it does. You killed him, Marshal. Yeah. You hit. No. What's this all about, anyway? A woman. Jim, I'm going to hitch up the stage and drive you into Dodge. I'd be grateful for that, Marshal. We'll have to go out of our way some. Uh, why? Jesse Daggett's luck ran all the way out this morning. That's why. Now our star, William Conrad. Today, there's one filter cigarette that stands out from all the rest. L and M stands out for flavor, for effective filtration, for highest quality tobacco. L and M's got everything. That's what makes it America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L and M's, king size or regular. I know you'll go for them. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Lawrence Dobkin, and Clayton Post. Harley Bear as Chester. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in... Gun smoke. Join Perry Como for all the top tunes on radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on this same network. On Monday, Perry's special guests will be the DeCastro sisters with their top record, Teach Me Tonight. Wednesday, Perry will sing his big new RCA Victor record, Home for the Holidays. Don't forget, the Perry Como Show, all the top tunes on radio. And as Perry says, don't forget those Chesterfields. Get a carton for the weekend. Hear Gunsmoke every Saturday, this same time, this same station. Hear the great new Perry Como radio show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday... 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, also on CBS Radio. This is the CBS Radio Network.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.